around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Sure does seem deserted tonight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it's pretty late, Chester. Well, it won't be like this much longer. The end of the month, the coal herds will start rolling in, and there won't be no peace around here for a fall. <laughs> You're a hard man to please. Well, I ain't complaining. It'd be kind of nice to have some life and excitement. How are you, Marshal? You remember me? Yeah, sure, I remember you, Elvin. Uh, you've grown some. Sure. I've had two years to do it in. Uh-huh. Put on any sense, have you? Along with the weight? No, so I'm still not in jail. Yeah. I gave you a year, didn't I? Said you'd either be jailed or hung by then. I sure hate to disappoint you, Marshal. Chester, you remember Elvin Grab, don't you? Yes, sir, I do. And I still got no use for him. You men sure ain't very friendly. What are your plans, Owen? Nothing much. Just got a hankering to see the old hometown. Your ma and Billy are getting along fine without you. Why don't you leave them alone? I figured they might need some help, maybe. You didn't figure it when you lived here. And you haven't worried about them for the last two years. Now, ma... You shut up and listen to me. Two years ago, after I let you get away with everything but murder just for your ma's sake, I finally ran you out of town and I told you not to come back. Yeah, I remember. All right. You are back. But this time, you don't get any second chances. You make one wrong move and I'm on you, Elvin. A man can change, Marshal. Some can and some can't. I'm just telling you how you stand in Dodge. Mr. Dillon, look down there. What? Marshal, a couple of fellas riding out behind the bank there. What? Oh, look, got it. Marshal. Oh, that's look. why you've been so talkative, huh? You're there. Look out. Look out? Now, Marshal, I'm out toward the river. Hey, Griff, come back here. You're under arrest. Not yet, Marshal. Now, while I got a gun in my holster... Don't be a fool, Griff. Get out! Yeah. Bet she's already in. 
seemed like to me we could have took time for some breakfast before we rode way out here. And I wanted to tell her before somebody else did. Hey! Get your feet! Get out of there! Let's give her a hand. Oh, those calves are getting away from her. Take a loose over there by the barn and I'll pick up these along the fence here. Ah! He'd never come back, even if he is my own son. He'll work on Billy now. He'll get him started down the same road he's on. Miss Grubb. Oh. Elvin's dead. Dead? Yes, and he and two other men broke into the cattleman's bank last night. When I started to arrest him, he drew and fired at me. Dead? Elvin... I think I'd better sit down. Here, here, here ma'am. Sit on this chair. Now, I remember the winter he was four, and he caught the pox. I took care of him night and day for a whole week, thinking any hour we was going to lose him. <sighs> Might have been better if we had. I'm sorry, Miss Grimm. Oh, I know for three, four years it was going to end this way, Marshal. Well, I wish there'd been some way to avoid it. What did I do wrong, Marshal, back along the years? Some place that made him turn bad? You know, a person never knows, I guess, man. They just do the best they can. But I gotta know. I got Billy to think of. Do you think he knew, Miss Grimm, about Elvin being killed? Not when he left this morning. He couldn't have. He was... Home all night. Nobody's been here. And he was probably meeting the three of them somewhere. Hideout, maybe. Yeah, I reckon. There's a ham missing and some other vittles. <sighs> what can I do, Marshal? Billy just can't go bad. Well, Lee Sullivan won't be a wrong influence on him. Not now, anyway. You really think that, Marshal? I ain't so sure. Must be a terrible feeling, Matt. What are you talking about, Kitty? Those two men who got away last night, not knowing who they are or where they are. Or when they'll step out from behind a building and try to shoot you in the back. They don't have much reason to do that. You killed Elvin Grubb. He was in with him. Revenge is a reason. Yeah, it is sometimes. I just hope maybe they left the country. I doubt if they have, Kitty. I think they're holed up somewhere around Dodge. Matt, I don't see how you can be so calm about it. I'm not calm, Kitty. Not till I find Billy Grubb. If you find him, you'll find them all. Well, I hope so. But you know he's joined up with them. Yeah, you're probably right. Mr. Dillon? Oh, here you are. What's the matter, Chester? Billy Grab. Did he come in here just now? Uh, no. I had a score. I just seen him out in the street. 
some kid that sure looked like him anyhow, and he was heading right in here. Behind Chester. Good evening, Billy. You dirty, rotten killer. Your brother chose the way I didn't. He knew what he was up against. Now, you better put that gun away. Sure I will. After I've emptied it in you. Oh. Billy, I'll give a kid more chances than I would a man, but not enough to get myself killed. Now, you hand over that gun. Stay back, Marshal. I ain't fooling. Did the gang give you the gun? Did they send you in to do their dirty work for them? Stop! Don't come no closer! I'm not putting up with any more foolishness, Billy. Now, you give me that gun before I throw you over my knee and take the flat of my hand to you. No! I said hand that over. No! No! Charlie! Thanks. I'll kill you! So help me, I'll kill you! Chester. Yes, sir. Take him over and lock him up. Come on now, Billy. You're killing me. You wait and see. I'll kill you. I think I'll kill you. We took a big chance, man. A crazy kid like that's worse than a gun fighter. Yeah, I know, Kitty. And I can't keep him in jail forever. <laughs> Like this, and there's some who wouldn't agree with you, Chester. Getting them fetched to you? Well, it's just like a fancy hotel. Ah, here's your breakfast, Billy. I don't want none. Well, maybe you'll change your mind. All right, take it inside, Chester. Yes, sir. You've been tight for breakfast now, isn't I told you I don't want it. All right, then, leave it. That them eggs and sideboard go to waste and... You can just eat cold mush tomorrow morning. I'm all out of here, Marshal. You ain't got nothing to hold me for. Well, Judge Bent says it's different. He's going to set bail this afternoon or tomorrow. Tomorrow, pay it. Yeah? And you'll probably let her. You really hate her, don't you, Billy? Hate her? You crazy? If you don't hate her, why are you doing the same thing to her that your brother did? You shut up! Marcus don't understand. Elvin was big. He took anything he wanted and didn't ask nobody. He's not big now, Billy. No bigger than the rest of them out there on Boot Hill. You're going to pay for that, Marshal. If they don't get you, I will. They? Who's they, Billy? <laughs> You'd like to know, wouldn't you? They're a pair of sneaking, thieving rats, the same as Elvin was. You don't owe them anything. Now, where are they? Matt! You in there? Uh, yeah, I'll be right out, Doc. You better think it over, Billy. You think it over, Marshal. Maybe you won't call him rats when one of us guns you for killing my brother. He's pretty head up, ain't he? Yeah. Come on in, Doc. Oh, Matt, uh, you still got the grub boy here? We just took him his breakfast. Oh, good. I figured maybe you'd want him to know about his ma. No, what about her? It was that herd of yearling calves she's got out there. Seems that she was trying to work him by herself, and they knocked her down and trampled her. But she hurt bad. Well, she'd be laid up in bed a week or so. She looks worse off than she is, where well, you'd think the Indians had caught her maybe and beat her to a pulp. Well, my trouble never comes single once it starts. Wait a minute, Doc. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. Yeah, it might work. If she'll go along with it, it just might work. Tell me what happened to her. I guess she wants to tell you herself. 
Ma? Ma, where are you? Billy. At least I guess I will be. Doc says I will, but... Billy, why they got handcuffs on you? It ain't nothing, Ma. Marshal said he knowed where you was and he'd fetch you, but... What's he done, Marshal? Well, he just lost his head a little, ma'am. I might have been willing to forget that part, but... Well, he's dead set on protecting a couple of bank robbers. And I figured a jail cell might change his mind for him. Them two that was with Elvin, that's who it was. His partners, friends, that's who you're protecting. Now, Ma. You're a sneaking coward. Just as low and mean and worthless as Elvin had got to be. He's dead, Ma. You got no call to talk about him like that. Dead, yes. Better off dead. I'm his own Ma, saying. You ought to been here this morning, Billy. Shake hands with your friends. Maybe you could have helped them. What you talking about? Look at me. How do you think this happened? They wouldn't do that. They're your friends. Yours and Elvin. All I seen was the handkerchiefs over their faces. They said Elvin had told them I was keeping money for them. Money they'd stole somewhere. No, they didn't. They, they couldn't have dragged me out in the yard, Billy. Here's their boots. A chunk of stove wood. I'll kill them. So help me, I'll kill them both. Why them? They're the same kind as Elvin. They were his friends. Well, they ain't my friends. Marshal, their names is Chuck Speller and Curly Tallman. They're at that old abandoned sod house west of Branch Fork Crossing, just above the ridge. Yeah, I know where it is, Billy. All right, take the handcuffs off, Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Marshal. I acted pretty crazy. We all do once in a while, Billy. Elvin must have been the same kind, or he wouldn't have run with him. I guess he wasn't so big at all. No, Billy, not very big, I'm afraid. Billy, would you mind fixing me a cup of tea? Oh, sure, Ma. Right away. Now, you just lay back there and rest. You're going to be well in no time. I lied to him, Marshal. It was a white lie, though, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. About as white as they come, Miss Graham. Well, Chester, I guess we'd better go bring him in. Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Marley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.